guys are not going to take this class. I'm not teaching you this class. Just to tell you, like, don't hire a transaction coordinator. That's all up to you. Um, it, to be a TC, or, which I don't think I am, but I love paperwork. So if you love paperwork and you like to know what each paperwork means, then this is for you. Like a, to be a TC, then it's for you because then you kind of have a handle of what the transaction and your escrow, how it's going, right? Because you pretty much know like everything that's going on into your escrow. So I'm the type of person. So if you're not, then that's fine. Um, you know, trust me, not everyone will be like, blah, blah, blah. But when I first started being my own transaction coordinator, again, because I'm the type of person that I need to know, like everything that happens. Yeah, I'm crap. Yeah, exactly. But, um, <laughs> this one said, is that I am a consultant. Yes, I need to make sure that I know and I can control what I can control within my whole situation. And I, I need to understand kind of like the freshness. Like I need to understand every little bit of everything because when my client asks me, oh, I just signed whatever, whatever form, man. But like, I want to be there like, what form? Like, oh yeah. But with me doing it, I'm like, okay, okay, I'm gonna send you this form. This is what it is. It's an FHA being addendum. This is just telling us that we have this limit. Hey, I'm sending you a contingency um, removal, blah, blah, blah. This is what it means. Remember, you cannot go back once you sign this, right? So it's just like little, little things. Let's say it's like something in the addendum, like you have to change within an escrow. An escrow addendum is going out. So I like escrow to send it to me first. Then I send it out to my client again, because that's who I am and that's how I want it to be done. Again, this is just for you guys to know what a transaction coordinator does. And for new agents, especially if you guys are doing a lease listing, you don't want to pay a transaction coordinator, right? Because your, your commission is only going to be like, what, a thousand bucks? A transaction co coordinator can be from like 250 to $500, okay? Depending on who it is. Um, so let's get started. So if you guys just barely start doing your TC work, trust me, when I first started doing it and learned it by myself, and yes, I did it on my own because nobody taught me, <laughs> um, it took me at least two hours to kind of like figure out everything. And then when I learned how exactly how to do it, then that's, it only takes me like literally with my, with my paperwork and everything, like 30 minutes or less. And I do it maybe like the day before I close and I just make sure I have all of the paperwork. Again, it's because I already know what goes on in our transaction, right? Um, just like forward living luxury agent said, everything that we do is like repetitive. So you guys should already know like all the forms and what didn't happen in your escrow. So in my head, I already know like, oh yeah, CR1 is done, CR2 is done, inspection is done, this is this and that. So I already know in my head that I already have all the files that's needed, okay? Then the night before, like literally I promise, the night before I will close, okay? The day before I send out the CDA, cause then of course I need to get paid. And then the night before, because I need to get paid, I need to make sure my, my command and paperwork is done and sent off to, well, now it's gonna be Alejandra, right? Um, but like literally, I literally do it in like 30 minutes. Okay, but again, I'm gonna show you guys how to get it all coordinated. So I do, I'm gonna show you my file. So right now, as you guys can see, I have about one, two, well, yeah, one, two, three, four, this one is done. So Lake Hughes, hold on. Lake Hughes, Palmdale, Granada Hills, Agora Hills. So we have, I have four active listings. Not listing, um, four active escrows. Okay? And again, so because I already know the stats and the forms, I pretty much kind of like, you know, um, have it in my head. But 
I actually started doing it as well. So like right now I have four escrows, right? So I just make sure I just start downloading all the paperwork. So then I know pretty much like, okay, um, what I need to ask, whether I'm the listing agent or I am the buyer's agent, okay? So I'm gonna show you, but we're gonna start with Granada Hills is a listing that I'm doing with Pam that we just went active, but I saved the form so that I can show you guys how to do it. So right now we are, um, we just did an open house and we are at, um, doing the counters. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. So on my files, I actually do a file and as soon as my files get up. Do you guys have any questions so far? Do I feel like I'm, I may see you? No. Okay. <laughs> I really can't see me. Okay. You see my files? So I name all my files, all the properties. So I have one at 8601 Crescent. It's up to you how you do it. Whatever works for you, whether it's by name, whether it is by address. So when I do it by the address, it pretty much means that the, uh, we're the listing, okay? If I do it by the name, that means that's a buyer's agent, that we're the buyer's agent, okay? Because then I know for a fact, because remember, like if you're the buyer, you don't know if that particular property is gonna get accepted, then you have to change, and then I don't wanna change the address. You know, it's just a hoopla. So, I do all of my files. Once I get an email from whether the listing agent from escrow, whatever, I save it right away. Even if I don't have the signatures on both sides, I save it right away and then I make the file, right? I open the file. So let's say we're going to do Ludlow. It's a property that we have a listing with. So in Ludlow, I have all the pictures that we did, all the files that we have. So I already have um, our listing. Where's my listing? Okay. Well, that's gonna fail. Where's my listing? Um, okay. So, anyways, so I will download the listing. I hope I can go to my yeah. Email, where's my email? Really quick. Don't look at my email. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> it's the How come it's not getting? It just is right down like that. How come I can't get into my email? Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. Uh, Okay, I guess we'll go to another listing. Okay, so let's go to another listing. <laughs> um, what's my new listing? Oh, we have Hollywood Hills. Okay, so let me do, okay, let's just do, let's do Brad's, it's a listing. Okay, so basically I would do all the files. I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna change it. So here's are all the files for the use. Okay. So what, what basically what you would do, once you get the file that's signed by just one-sided, I, I upload them right away, put them in the file folder. Then I send them out. So if I'm a listing agent, I'm sending it out to the buyer's agent, like, hey, I need this to be signed, please return it back to me. Once I get it signed, then I put it back and download it and upload it right away into my file. Because then I know, that's the same file that's already um, fully signed. Now you guys can do a trick that I did before. I will put the file name and then I will put FE, means fully ex um, executed. That means both parties have already signed. So then you can rename it and you can know that, okay, this is already fully executed. Both parties have already signed. At that point, if you want to, so that you, you're safe, what's awesome about command is that when I first started um, this, I didn't know how being a TC, especially with Keller Williams. I don't know how it was before with my brokerage, but with Keller Williams, when I saw that, I'm like, wait, it actually tells you all the freaking documents that you need. Look at that, guys. 
So these are all the documents that you need. It's so easy. It's like a no brainer. Okay. So again, I'm not saying to, you know, not to get a TC. It's all up to you. But for me, it's like, why am I paying somebody $350 when I can do it in 30 minutes? Okay. But, but again, but the TC is because like once you get, you know, busy, then you, um, you can just go out there and right. do it. But again, with me, because I'm a control freak and I need to know like where everything is and where every transaction is at, um, I like doing my own TC. Maybe in the future when I have like, you know, right now I'm good. Like four escrows, I can still handle it. Five, maybe 10, we'll talk. So anyways, so this is all the paperwork that you guys need. Anything that's required are the ones that you need to update. I mean, up upload. Anything that's conditional or optional, again, that comes into knowing um, what type of transaction you have, right? Because you're like automatically already know, like, okay, if it is, if it is um, a trust account, I already know I need an RCSC. Okay, and then guys, if you don't know what it is, see this I uh, button right there, it tells you exactly what it is. So trust advisory is on zip form, it's conditional. AAA, that's an additional agent acknowledgement. So if I'm doing a listing with Maria, right, on the RPA, I mean RPA, on the RLA, it won't let us do two agents, so then I have to attach a, an AAA and have me sign it as an additional agent. Okay, so I so then I just know that for a fact that I, I need to have that. Okay, so Kelly Williams ABA is right there. Again, like from my lease class, I told you guys if it's underlined like this. So they made it so easy for us that you guys on before the Kelly Williams addendum and the Kelly Williams disclosure, this had to be, you have to go to another website where they used to do the green sheet and that was a CDA, which is my PW, my PW. Um, and then you have to download all these forms. And you have to remember that this form, so certain type of forms that needs to be with the buyer, then there's certain type of forms that needs to be with the seller, and then there's certain type of forms that needs to be with your leases. So before they did this, I actually had to upload them and put them in a file folder which I had on my files, I actually still have them. And then I have to make them say like, Keller Williams leases, Keller Williams addendums for seller, Keller Williams addendums for buyer. But now they made it so easy that it's right here. So if you guys don't have it, you don't have to um, go to that website. You just click on it and then download it and then put it on your doc site and have your uh, buyer and seller sign it, okay? What's easier if you're a listing agent, have your seller sign all of the all of the documents, save it on your file. So when you get open escrow, you just go bam, 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 buyer's agent, here's all our disclosures and forms that's needed to be signed right now. And you already have half of all of your paperwork done. So that would be like a, another quick um, thing that you guys can do. But so let's say for instance, right here, we're gonna use this because the other form is not there. But so I will do, so how you do this is that you start with your opportunities, right? And you're gonna do create an opportunity. And then you're gonna say call of assets to the market center. If you have a team, then you do your team and an opportunity type. And we're gonna do a listing. And then the owner is of course you. So opportunity type is whether if it's a listing or a buyer, okay? So you just, we're gonna do the listing right now because we're doing the load low. And then the client name is Carrie. So if your client is not on here, then you have to go, you have to add a contacts. in order for them to be on, to do your, um, I'll do this 
So you pretty much like fill out everything that you have because we're like started dating all that stuff. I'm gonna kind of like rush through all that. So again, create an opportunity. And I, this was like a whole day of training. And I'm like the last one, I'm probably like the most boring one, so sorry. Uh -huh. Okay, so listing, your, um, it's gonna be a listing the, of your client is Carrie. Oh, how okay. come? You're telling me right now. Mm -hmm. Is it can Wait, a little sensitive? Oh, no, you should pick come up. Spelling is still. Am I like not misspelling? Mm -hmm. It's just a little dark. Yeah, it's right there. K E R R I. Why not? A R I. Oh, I know why. K E R I. Give me a break. Thank you. Such a gentleman. Thank you. <laughs> ah, can you mute everyone? Where is it? It already gives you all of the documents. So right now we're unlisted. That means you got the listing. You have it, the listing agreement signed. Under contract meaning that you guys already accepted an offer. Okay. And then, of course, close is that you're closed before. By the way, if you guys are doing a listing, then you don't have to do another um, command for the buyer side. So you're just gonna be the listing right now and then do everything on here, okay? So your buyer's documents will be the under contract. Oh yeah, somebody's on the way Sorry. Sorry. Okay, I have so, a bad control. <laughs> so on the listing side, see where it says right here? So again, you guys can have the checklist. You guys can download that, What whatever, but save a tree, you don't need, you don't need that. So the very first thing is here, MLS active or SELM. So either or you guys gotta um, get that done. So what I do, you just go to your SRAR, okay? You log in. 
I'm done. This is like a very boring class, guys. So sorry. I'm trying to make it fun. I don't know how. This is great info. Okay. It is. Oh, fun. thank no, you. It is. Okay, so then if it's your listing, then it should be on your my listings, right? So if you go on your MLS right here on the my matrix, and it says my listings. Oh, I'm like looking at that. Okay, my listings, and then there's the blue. So on your command, it means to show active. So that's the part that you're gonna go print, right? And then you're gonna save it as PDF and then save, and then I'm just gonna put it on load low because that's where it is. Again, you should have your stuff here. And then I will put MLS active. So then I know that because why I'm putting MLS active, because remember when we close, you're gonna print one out that says MLS close, that shows closing. And then even on contract, I'll show you guys, on your contract, when you guys accept an offer, see where it says MLS sheet under contract or pending. So each stage of your listing, you need to have that. Same thing as a buyer, right? So it needs to show as a buyer that you have it under contract and then they should have it under your name. And then also with closing, it should say close with you showing as the name of the buyer's agent. Okay, because then if you don't have that, then they're gonna, um, not gonna then you have to send an email to Alex Alejandra or to your MCA and let them know like hey I forgot to like print out the active when it was first active but here's um I usually just put my pending because that's when usually I would like remember it but now I, I remember it <laughs> so again so this is how I do it again not very exciting that window you're in, that's on your computer. Yes. That's how you have your files. Yes. Okay. So this is so how I have all my files so I know exactly how to run it. And then so you do your MLS. Ta-da! See how easy that was? So easy. So yeah. you just upload and then the real is right. So again, if you're like me, if you guys are starting, and then I would suggest just once you get your listing or even your RPA sign right away, just go ahead and start uploading them. Because if you just start first started, again, you guys might take a while to like get, you know, get the whole sync of this on how to do your files, how to like, especially when you're getting like so many emails, right? Like, oh, this is this form for this form, or this is this form for this form. Um, so there's two ways that I can do that, it depends on you guys. So I usually just like doing like one whole thread for that whole, transaction like let's say for like the escrow escrow is open blah 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 so then i just like doing that whole thread but then i also try to do it so for instance for with my home la um oren really likes it because again he's also a control freak so he likes to show he likes to see like all the forms too that's been like being sent through everybody so then i and he likes it done where each email will say like fully executed RPA, fully executed CR1, you know? So then we know like, oh, okay. So when you search your email, like you can just put uh, fully executed CR1 and then everything will be there. So in case at the very end, when you're putting all of your documents together, you can easily find them, okay? So for the MLS, so same thing, you go to your MLS and then you go to your tax. See right here where it says realist tax? Just click on that, and that's your real stats that they would want, and then print. Okay, whether you want to just print and save it to your file, or you can go ahead and save it and upload it now to your command, whichever you want. So again, I put it on my file, and then I put realist text. So then if I want to do it later, or if I want to do it now, then I can easily find it. What do you got? Doing things properly. Oh, I put on the door properly. Okay. 
So, and by the way, since you guys took um, Philip's class on Tuesday, you guys should know about the um, the SIP forms too, right? So basically, most of these forms are seen as the SIP forms. So again, oh, and then system zip forms. Car.org. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's on car.org. So this is how I do. So this is kind of like easy, right? So then this is where all the agents kind of like freak out. Because then you guys are like, oh my gosh, I'm like. So I'm pretty sure everyone knows how to dissect the RPA. Right? Right? Yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So with the listing, it's, it's the same thing. Where is my listing agreement? So let's just pretend I didn't do the this is, this has already been dissected, as you guys can see. Okay, so I've already dissected our listing and also our RPA. So that's why it's all right there. So what I do, how I get to that is this. So I go, this is our RPA. Where is my listing for this property? Sorry, I have my own lingo. Okay, here. So basically, again, once you guys get into this, the transaction coordinator mode, then you pretty much know all the forms. So this is your AD. I'm pretty sure you guys know, right? So this thing is AD1, RPA is AD2. So if you're if you're representing the listing side, you're AD1. That's why if you look at your command, it's gonna say AD1. But if you're if you're representing the buyer side, that's gonna say AD2. Okay. So AD1 again. So same thing. So what I do, what I will start doing once I receive this and everyone's already signed it is that I will start dissecting it. So I'll do 80, 80, oops, I will do print, save as PDF. This is page one to two, right? Oh no, page one only, sorry. Page one and then save. And then I will put 81 and then listing. This is Brad's. And I will put 81. I would just put like 81 because I already know it's 81, but it's up to you if you guys want to put like 81 listing if this is your big, if, if this is your first time. Yeah. yeah. So then I just save it. And then I, I, I start going down the line. FHDA. Okay. Again, same thing. But FHDA is two pages. So then I would do same page two to three, right? That's FHBA. Save, again, go to your file. And then I do FHBA, because we're dissecting the listing, um, the listing, okay? So then when I go to my command, okay, see, FHBA already exists. Perfect. So then I would just go to the FHBA and replace it if that's already been signed by both parties. Okay, and then I would go, okay, do you want to, no, I don't want to complete it. And then I would go to my command, and then I would do 81, pretend this is red. So I would go to 81, and then open. And then there, it's already required, is already, requirement is already there. Questions? Nothing. Concerns? Nothing. Yeah? So same thing with the under contract. I mean, this is basically what you do. Like, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because you guys are going to be bored out of your mind. I'm already <laughs> bored out of my mind teaching it. <laughs> so 
but so same thing right so then you go to under contract under contract meaning you've already got an offer accepted an offer or your offer has been accepted um let me show you how it looks like with if you just do representing the buyer so if you're just representing the buyer So you see how it's different. See where it says on your left side, it says consultation and under contract and closed. So the your listing side, all opportunities. Listing side shows listed, under contract, and closed. Okay, so that's how you guys will know that when there's the listed, that means that you you're the listing agent and then the buyer is just only two pretty much because you don't really need the consult consultation part unless you have the consultation agreement signed then you can upload that which i always forget but yeah so that's your so under contract is basically the same thing as the listing side it's just that you just don't have the listed part of it and then close most of this um forms are from your escrow except vp vp is something that you would do or the buyer's agent will need to do and then um of course your cda and then the the legal form which is right here so where it's line up um underline again you just upload it put it into docusign and have yourself um sign it Okay, and then if you're doing the listing agent, then you mark listing agent or you're the selling agent and um, the cl close of escrow and this is usually $99. But if you're putting, if you're representing both sides and that would be 100 and what, 109? Yeah, no, 198, sorry, 198. Okay, and then you just upload it right here where it says legal. And yeah, and then, I mean, that's pretty much, it to being a TC, do you always charge a transaction fee for me? Well, if I'm doing it, I'm not charging. So no, that's that form that we don't. No, no, no. This is not your transaction fee. This is your legal fee. Got it. Yeah. This is like that's why you have Rich. That's why we have um, uh, what's his name? Con. That's Jeff. for Jeff Con. This is that's your ninety nine dollars, and then you have administration fee, which is. 99 and then I think the administration fee is $74. So that's where it comes and then whatever your TC fee is, which is that's why if you use the TC transaction here, the in-house is 525, is it? Right? 525. Yeah, 525 because of all of that. Now, if you hire somebody, then you ask the TC what the amount is, and then but then you have to add $99 plus 74. $99 is your legal, 74 is your admin. Admin meaning these people, the one that like, or your MCA, because they're the ones who's going to be looking your compliance, basically, making sure that like, all of your forms are in there, that your DC did their work, and they've been submitted as an MCA. You're welcome. Yeah, so that's what it is. And then also, guys, remember that your DC and, and that fee either you charge it to your buyer or your seller. So when you do your CDA, make sure that you look at your CDA and you read it and make sure that if you are charging it to your buyer or seller that you don't get charged for it. So it says it right there on your CDA. It would say um, $99 and then $74, right? If, it's, if, it, if you see it that it's being charged and that means you're paying for it. So that means you're paying for it and then your buyer or seller also paid for it. So read your CDA. If it says it there, then that means you are charging it. Then you just, you know, let your MCA know or AMCA that, like, hey, by the way, that's already being charged with escrow. That's so, you know, like my buyer or my seller is paying for that. Okay. And then you also need to let your MCA know who your um, transaction coordinator is. Send them the address so that they know and you let them know that um, that they are paying for the 99 and the 74, or if you are paying for the 99 or the 74, or if you don't have a transaction coordinator. 
Okie dokie. Questions, concerns? The question I have is when it comes to command and opportunities for a new construction and they have all the forms that are required, do we just... So for new construction, they're going to send you um, just the form, right? And then, and then you just let your MC know this is a new construction. You can you can ask them for a copy of it and just let them know like, hey, um, can I have a copy of of the of the contract? Because one, because they're gonna give your client a copy of. Right, I have that in the contract, but I I noticed like there are certain things in the contract that are not what they're asking for, mm -hmm. and I know previously when I did something. I just gave them the entire contract and they just kind of like leave the other thing right. they requested. So is that kind of like the same thing? Right. That happened here? Yeah. So just let the AMCA know, like, hey, just so you know, this is a new construction. This is the only form that we that I received from them. Like, okay. Mm -hmm. And then just make sure that on your notes when you're doing your CDA, that it is a new construction. And then they who the escrow is and all that stuff, and then they will. Okay. I've been uploading everything to the okay. for opportunity, whatever. I just wanted to, I didn't know if there was something that needed. No, so anything that you guys, so for instance, I would usually get a lot of brokerages that does not want to sign our Keller Williams addendums, right? And then, so as long as you have um, an email, hey, so and so, so. Just to confirm, you do not want you your brokerage is not allowing you to sign the Keller Williams addendum. So what you're gonna do with that email is you're gonna print it out, and then you're gonna upload it into where it says Keller Williams addendum, and then also email CC um, C, copy your A, your MCA or ANCA in regards to that as well, so that they know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's this thing? Oh yeah. Somebody under the chat. Somebody was asking a question. Where at the bottom. Huh? At the bottom. Oh, like here? No. In the middle of the where it says chat. Oh. What is it? Are you for hire to train me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I am a thousand dollars a minute. Not the same. Um, who's saying who's saying that? Is that Alexandra? Um no, it's an iPhone. It's, an iPhone. it's usually Alexandra. Oh, um, who's this? I don't know. I work at Keller Williams and was with, oh, I see. <laughs> so you know, I love about a form CBA. Yeah, so it's like it sounds like a bit yeah. Okay, so somebody wants to know, you guys want to have to do find your CBA? I'll show you. See what it says right here details, buyer profile, documents, offers, and commissions. That's your CBA. Okay, okay, so. As I was telling um, Erica yesterday, when you guys open, when you guys, when you guys get a listing, okay, if you if anyone wants to hire and instead of doing what, if, you if want anyone to wants to hire a TC instead of doing this, I do TC work. Uh, that's Jessica. Please. There you go, Jessica. Um, please let me know how I contact you, so you have to tell them. Okay. Sure. You got a text here. Um, so, yeah, so for your CDA, you guys, once you get, get a listing, you see those emails that, that comes out like, well, you know, congratulations to Erica Thompson for having closing on Maria Ginaldo for closing, whatever, or have a listing. So that's how they know. So when you guys get a listing, you go to this offers and commissions, you fill out, hold on, so let me see. So the CDA is only for listing. No, for both. That's for your listing and and for your buyer. So commission disbursement. Yeah, that's your commission disbursement. Yeah. So basically, um, oh, can you go to my thing to so I can type right here? Yeah. Uh, so my info is so um so when you guys get a listing, go into your go into your commissions. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna, so you're gonna go to your commissions. And then you don't even have to finish it. 
Okay, if they don't even have to finish it, and then it will it will let the office know that you have a listing. So then that's when they say, oh, congratulations, um, you have a listing, right? Can I do a logo? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, now I wish I can show you how to. I wonder if I can just do it pretend. Okay, hold on. Um, my email is. Let me do it again. Wait. Okay. So, um, I have a question too. And then, on the buyer site for a condo, are required jobs the same as for? Yes. Except yes. Except for enjoy yes. Yes, it's pretty much the same, Marcia. Marcia. Um, but there's also like if you guys get like, like oh, let me show you this. So if you guys get additional documents and it's not on our list, right? So let's say HOA docs. You would just say HOA docs, and you know how like they usually give you like in um in different files, and you can't really do them all at once for the HOA docs. So they'll do like you know, prepayment HOA docs or disclosure HOA docs, right? So what you would do, if there's any, I use, I would just, so any documents that I get from a property, from a transaction, I just put it all in command. Because the thing is, I guess I would have it on my file, but if a client comes back to me or if, you know, Kelly Williams needs it or whatever, it's already all in the command. Like, I'm like, oh, it should have been, everything should have been there, right? So anything is possibly, even if it's not on the list, I, I upload it. And how you upload that, see, so if it's not on the list, I don't know if this one has it. See, see right here? So this one is a property in Lake Hughes, which actually does a well certification. So I upload the well certification, but it's not on our list, right? So how you will do that is that see this three little dots? You click on it and then you add a document. You, you do well disclosure or well inspection or well certification. You name whatever it is, so then it will be easier for you and for Keller Williams to look at. And then document type, it would be an other. Right, and then again, just browse and upload. And then I just go like that. And then you just save. And then it's all the way at the bottom and it's in purple. So if it shows it's in purple, that means that it is not part of our required documents per se, but you still just have it. Okay, and then so with your CDA, so this is what's going to happen. Is that you fill out, let me just show you guys how to do it. Um, let me see if I can open up a new one, like a pretend. Uh, let's see if Maria's here. Maria. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, gosh, good. Gosh, good. Because everyone's pretty much like a new agent, right? Okay, so then you guys, I know I'm. I'm just gonna choose Maria. I don't even know someone. I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so let's say it was seven ninety nine, nine nine nine, or eight hundred thousand is the listing. This is our asking, and then I'm putting it at three percent. Let's just say active staging negotiations. Oh, by the way, do you guys know the meanings of these? So staging means that you're just like kind of getting it, that marketing, you're starting to market it, showing, you're showing the property. Legacy means these are past clients that you've already sent them, you've already sold them properties before. Okay. Um, so so just so you know what are the what those phases are, because you might be like, what does that mean? So you just basically mark it to where you're at. But I usually just put, I just mark it to negotiations unless they're like a past client, then I will put legacy. Okay. 
Okay, and then you just do create. And then see right here, so offers and commissions. So then you will start and you will go add a new offer. And then this is an initial offer. So don't freak out because once you close, you don't even have to touch this until you actually close. Um, yeah, once you close, you don't have to touch it because once it sends to Alexa, Alejandra, she will um, finish everything and then you will just get an email. Hey, check out your CDA. Is this correct? Okay. And then you're going to do create an offer and then you're going to say it's an initial offer. Offer date was today. We're going to close on next month. And then it doesn't matter. Okay. And then you just do your name. Oh, what did I do? What did I do? What did I do? <laughs> Again, this is only if you're doing this. If you have a TC, then they should be doing it. They should be able to do it, I believe. Right? Anyone that has a TC? I haven't had a TC, so I don't know. So seller, all of that, and then your presentation, and then your terms. I guess it's not ready. Okay. It's just a Maria. And then she's represented by Erica. Let's say Erica. Okay, and then the terms. And then it was, let's say, 200000 So you guys are going to, this is the cash means this is their down payment. Okay, and then percentage is 3%, then option, and then you leave everything else and then you just go agent analysis and then save. And then that's it. And then it goes in, and then what you do next is that, okay, so now you're, you guys are gonna close it. I mean, not close. So you do this and then you go accept. If everything looks good, you're gonna go accept. I wonder if I do it, I don't want them to think that I'm getting another one. <laughs> and it's gonna be on the thing. Okay, so anyways, I don't wanna do it because then I don't wanna mess up their numbers. <laughs> but you're basically gonna go accept, right? And then the next file is gonna say, manage your commission. And then it's gonna ask you, it's pretty much already populated to whatever your agreement is with the office. Okay, and then you're gonna do a managed commission and then that's where you add your notes, escrow is blah, 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 or whatever. Um, and then you leave it alone until you close. And then you just get an email saying that, please check your CDA, make sure everything is correct. And then let's say if you got like a higher offer, right? Instead of an 800 or 750,000 here, then you just let them know like, hey, by the way, the C um, is actually like 900,000 or whatever. And then they do like um, they take they change everything for you. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. And then you'll get yeah. So you will always get an email saying to check it. So then that's why you guys make sure you check your your um disbursement. Make sure you check your ninety nine dollars and your seventy four dollars. Um, that you're not charging it. I mean, you're not getting charged if you're charging your seller or your buyer. Capish. Questions, concerns? Oh, let's see, I did it in less than 15 minutes. Does commercial work the same? Commercial, you mean the CDA? The wall, just in general. No, man. Com no. Um, no. It's different because commercial has, um, they have a different forms. Could the you know how you said that the five plus unit is going to be considered commercial? Yeah. So. So we, yeah, we have to figure that out. We have to find out about that. But probably, but yeah, commercial um, listing agreement is totally different. It's just a but I know buyer. Yeah, it's still gonna be different because you, that, that's the listing that they're gonna send you and then you sign. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the seller will call you. 
the one where you're gonna design it. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll try to help you. Okay, any other questions? Let's see what Zach is saying. Maria? It says, oh, thank you. thank you, Louisa. Okay, guys, if you don't have any questions, thank you so much for coming and listening to my boring class. Yeah. So let me know if you guys have any questions about the, the DC part. Okay, I'm here in the office all the time. Great class. Right. So her question is, um, the TC part is just getting all the required documents from that's, that says on the command. Yes. That's basically what you're doing. Whatever the required documents is, you just make sure that all of the required documents is uploaded, and then you can pretty much set it over and you get and you get paid. Like you don't really have to do the other optional, but again, like with me, I would rather like anything and everything that will they will send over to me because you never know what could happen with it now until after it closes, right? They can come back to you like, hey, where is this document? And you're like going through your file. Maybe you got a new computer, whatever not, right? But if it's in the command, oh yeah, it's right here. I actually uploaded it. And they believe before they could even go to you, they will go to your command file and then like, look through it. Right, that's what I mean. mm -hmm. So again, like, anything and everything that you guys get from that transaction, put in a command. It doesn't matter. It's not in your computer. It doesn't waste any space. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, my Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Monique. Awesome, awesome. Okay, yay, no more classes. <laughs> and don't forget.